Yeah, then the two Division One South games they take place on Saturday. I suppose you can't really look more further than the the Dublin Kerry clashes. I think it's going to evoke memories of two thousand one. The fact they're meeting in, in Tardis again, obviously completely different environments. You know, behind kind of closed doors. But in general, when these two sides meet the last couple of years, it just leads to high scoring, entertaining football. Even the league yeah. opener last year, one nineteen each. You know, the Ireland games, one eighteen to fifteen, one sixteen each. Even the league game earlier that year in three, Kerry won one on eighteen to two fourteen. So going on the evidence is definitely what we've seen from Kerry last week and we know what Dublin are capable of. I don't see anything different happening on Sunday. No, I can't see it. Um, listen, it'll be end to end football, but both teams will play um, and, and sometimes it's overlooked that they do play players back in defensive positions, but it's their transition from defence to attack that I uh, suppose sets them apart from other teams. They, they do it at a faster pace and um, get more bodies up to support their attack probably more so than any other team does and, and that's what the difference between Kerry and, and Dublin and, and the rest of the pack. Um, based on last week's evidence, you have to uh, say that it's certainly going to be an, an attacking um, show for us all to watch and, and be entertained. And um, hopefully if David Cliff, Clifford can reach the, uh, reach the heights that he did last weekend, uh, kicking 3-6, then we're in for some uh, some uh, Irish football. Do you ever score a hat-trick as, as good as that yourself? I did. I scored a hat trick in the championship match, believe it or not. <laughs> so I did back in two thousand and three against Limerick. So a great feeling. Uh, I think I scored. Finished that day with three four. Um, so scoring three six um, is a fantastic record. Uh, his his last goal. Um, I think it's been probably broke um, social media channels <laughs> across Ireland uh, this week is fantastic so it was a great finish and, and you know great composure from for s- still such a young player um, to be able to hold his head and, and just slot it in the way he did yeah it's mad to think he's still only 22 like it's you, yeah. you think like we're probably aren't even going to see the best of him for another three or four years if it keeps going the way he is the big thing kind of for Kerry was from last year was kind of their cautious approach the way they set up against Kerry were kind of playing the two kind of defensive minded wing forwards and maybe it was because there was the element they didn't kind of trust their defenders they went obviously with more natural forwards in their positions kind of last yeah. week defensively they kind of looked okay but the biggest thing i kind of came away from i knew after like just the way the pattern of this game was after 10 minutes i just remember saying to my dad when i was watching it like carrier just going to blitz this match go we just don't look interested we still don't really know i think of the way the nature of the league is with the quick turnarounds as well with training but we still don't really know defensively where Kerry still are at the moment yeah, um, and they probably won't even be tested that much this weekend because we know that Dublin just, you know, capitulate most teams that they play against and it'll be the same against against Kerry. They'll still score 18, 19, 20 points regardless of, of how Kerry's defence perform. Um, but from Kerry's point of view, you know, you would imagine that there will be a more attacking emphasis put in their play this year. Um, you know, for me, um, from the outside looking in, I, I think David Clifford and, and Sean O'Shea are two of the most talented footballers in the country. And you've got to utilise those boys uh, to the maximum. Uh, with Paul Ganey in the ranks as well, an experienced player like him, and Killian Splan having a couple of seasons behind him now, you know, they're only going to add serious value to, to their attack as well. And um, I think, you know, when you have serious weapons like that up front, you have to u- use it and utilise it to the best of your advantage. And last year, by playing the negative brand, the which they did against Cork, um, didn't justify how Kerry should have gone about their business. Do you think maybe something that might have, when you look back on over the winter time, if Kerry kind of had stuck to their, what kind of suits and kind of best, and they got over that hurdle against Cork and got through Munster, that, you know, could they have stopped the sixth in a row last year or was still the case of just the way Dublin were going last year that nothing was going to stop them? It's it's hard to know. Um, you know, any team at the minute that has any aspirations of stopping Dublin has to put in a massive, massive performance. And, you know, there's there's teams that are close to Dublin, but they still haven't got across that, that finishing line. And I'm talking about Mayo and Kerry in recent seasons. And for me, Donegal are still the next closest thing. And if Dublin are to be stopped in their tracks, it's going to be one of those three teams. Um, and I, I really can't see any other team outside of the, the top four at the minute. Throne will, will always uh, believe that they can. And, and maybe they might be able to... Uh, find something different this year with the new management and all in place but I just believe that it's uh, between Donegal, Mayo and Kerry to stop um, Dublin's run and whether that would have been last year or not if that, if Kerry had got through Cork remains to be seen but um, it's 
it's a difficult task for any team. 